Hello everyone, a uh, very very good evening and uh, welcome to Study IQ IAS. I hope that everybody is uh, able to hear my voice properly and uh, watch the video. So guys, today we are going to do the part of our uh, lecture that is the third part. In fact, the lecture three is there. And in today's lecture, we will be doing the topic that is the art of the Indus Valley. That means here we are going to discuss about the Harappan civilization, the aspects of the arts and crafts during the Harappan period. Overall, this particular topic will be in the two different parts. Today we will be doing the first part in which I will be discussing with you about the Harappan seals, about the Harappan sculpture art and about some general features of the technologies which were used in the construction of these things. And in the next part of this lecture, I will be talking about the potteries of Harappa as well as the architecture of the Harappan buildings. Okay, everyone. So make it sure that do not forget to share this class with your friends as well as the people who are enthusiastic to learn about the art and culture of the country. So that is going to be very interesting and very useful class for them. Good evening, Explorer and Suresh Rathor. Good evening to both of you. In fact, those who are uh, live, good evening to each and every one of you. And guys, make it sure that uh, turn out in bigger numbers in the live sessions because they are more interactive and more useful for you. Now, moving further, you can have a look on this particular picture, right? I think uh, most of you might be having an idea that uh, this is basically a bullock cart, you know, and uh, these are the potteries obtained from Harappa. This is the another pottery, but two pictures, in fact, two figures that you most of you might be aware of. Okay, Sarvendra. One is on my right hand, a on on the other that is on the that is on the left hand. So one is on the right, and the other is on the left. And you can see here, this is the very famous, well-known bronze statue of the dancing girl, and this is the statite statue of the priest of Mohanjodaro. It is uh, assumed to be the priest. Nobody knows exactly. Nobody knows exactly that if this was a dancing girl or if that was a priest, that is not very sure. Now, why am I saying like that? It is because basically when we talk about the Harappan culture and civilization, remember that these people, they used to write different things. Of course, they have uh, the script, but we are unable to understand the scripts of the Harappa. That is why if we talk about Harappan period, let me tell you that Harappan periods is basically that is decided as the as the proto historic period. Okay, as the proto historic period. So this is why the importance of the archaeological evidences that is a very, very high, very, very high. All right, everyone. Now moving further. And uh, let us see the most important part for everyone and uh, when we talk about the most important part guys you can see that uh, study iq has decided to launch the last batches where we are going to close the admissions on 31st of august that is also going to be the evening batch only and uh, those students who are looking for uh, getting a one-stop solution for all their preparation related uh, issues they can get to know more about our batches which are available in english english and hindi here they can basically get each and everything related to the prelims mains and interview all the stages of examination and if you are using this code asr live this is the least possible fees that you are going to pay by any other means you will be paying the higher fees but when you are using my code this is will be the this will be the best possible price anyways now coming to the topic here arts of the Indus Valley. Okay. So here, first of all, if we talk about the art forms in Harappan civilization, remember that the art forms are found from the various sites. In fact, Harappans were very evident, very much expert in the art and craft structures. It is evident from the presence of the various artifacts like the sculptures, seals, potteries, gold jewelries, silver jewelries, and terracottas. Now, in fact, I'm sorry for silver, copper jewelry. So these things were actually present in the life of Harappan people. And uh, if you look at the artistic expressions, 
दे वेर वेरी वेल वर्स्ड विथ द नेचर ऑफ ब्यूटी दे वॉन्टेड दे एक्चुअली दे वॉन्टेड टू ब्यूटिफाई देअर सराउंडिंग्स दैट इज वाई लॉट ऑफ डेकोरेशन लॉट ऑफ डेकोरेटिव आइटम्स वेर ऑल्सो ऑप्टेंट they were wanted to beautify they they wanted to beautify themselves that is why a lot of uh, jewelries have also been recovered if you look at their potteries the potteries of harappan people they also decorated their potteries they also decorated their potteries have a look on this one as well you can see the design of a leaf design of a leaf and this leaf probably appears to be the leaf of a people the leaf of people isn't it it appears to be design of the leaf of people here you can see the small triangle like structure here you can see the parallel lines okay the parallel lines so you can say that harappans were having a sense of beauty a sense of decoration and in any society which is civilized and which is uh, dedicated to make the surroundings beautiful that society will definitely develop the lots of art and craft etc right here for example the harappans they also used the human and the animal figures and they appear very realistic in the nature in fact if you see the images like bull images or the unicorn images or the images of the you know human faces which they have made i will tell uh, i will say one thing that their aesthetics regarding the human body appearance that was not very good i'm sorry to say but that was not very good they did not have the proper idea about how to give the shape to the human face right but when we look at the images of the animals they had perfectly fine aesthetic knowledge perfectly fine knowledge of the ratio and proportion guys those who are thinking that what is the significance of studying about these sculptures or these uh, artifacts obtained from harappa let me tell you that when right when you know about the sculpture this also indicates that you know about the you know about the significance of ratio and proportion about the significance of the color combination about the significance of the dimensional size okay so that means you are working with your logic and you are intelligent person this is why in any society when the people are not developed in you know not developed uh, Uh, you can say civilizationally then they do not have such type of uh, decorative items such type of uh, sculptures such type of artifacts but when there is the civilizational growth when people become well versed with the technology you know knowledge learnings only then people develop the art and culture also so when we say culture and the civilization these are two distinct things we need to understand the difference here culture is basically the specific way of living a specific way of living for example suppose if uh, i am living in a village i will follow the culture of the village like my attire my dressing will be different my language you know the words will be different my cuisine the food will be different my habitat the house structure will be different my practices and customs rituals etc will be different my celebrations festivals will be different isn't it all these are the part and parcel of the culture which defines the which defines the qualitative aspect or the defining attributes of the life of an individual that is what we call as culture isn't it our language our appearance our attire our you know food our habits all these are a part of our culture but when we talk about uh, the materialistic aspect like suppose i am eating that is okay that is my culture but where am i eating am i eating in a hotel or am i eating am i eating in my home am i eating with the spoon 
or am I eating with the hands? Basically, now when I will be eating with the spoon, I will need to manufacture the spoon. So, spoon manufacturing industry will be established. When I am eating in a hotel, the hotel need to be constructed. So, then we need to construct the additional building where only the people who are going to eat something, only they will come. So, when along with the cultural development, along with the cultural development, when we have to construct the additional structures which support which support and enhance the quality of our life. They are quantifiable in the terms of the value, monetary value or economical value. Then we call them as the civilizational growth or the civilizational development. All right, everyone. So that is, I think, the most important difference here. You can have your own versions of understanding, but these are the basic things that we need to understand. Now, when I'm talking about the arts of Harappan Valley, as I told you that they were basically civilizational, uh, civilizational people. So, naturally, they were developed. Naturally, they had the materialistic aspirations. So, this is why, this is why we can see the presence of the civic planning, like houses, markets, storage facilities, offices, public bath, etc., etc. And all these they are related to the culture. The culture is also attributed to the geography of a particular place. For example, the Arab culture is to wear the gown-like dress. You know, the gown-like dress. In Arab region, you can see both men and women. They cover their complete body. The traditional Arabs I am talking about. Even the men also have got the you know, headgear. The women have got the headgear and a scarf as well because the uh, men have the beard but the women don't have so they have the scarf to cover the face then the full body is covered whereas if you compare the attire of the indian you know people with the arabic people there you can have that in india we usually have the angavastram I'm talking about the conventional attire I'm not talking about that I'm wearing a shirt and pant and all no conventional attire traditional so angavastram is basically you know you can say a folded sheet of cloth which is just kept on your shoulders usually in the traditional worships you do not see that people are wearing the upper body cloth especially the men they only wear a dhoti right a dhoti a dhoti is very very light cotton fabric which is in you know folded in such a way that it allows a lot of air to pass that means that due to the warm climate of India, the majority of people traditionally, they had to wear such a cloth which involved the lesser covering of the body so that the air was more, tra more transported. Similarly, if you compare the food habits, geography defines the food habits as well, isn't it? Similarly, my dear, if you compare the art and culture, the geography also defines the art and culture. Like, if we take the example of, uh, you know, this particular statue, if we take the example of this particular statue, this is the statue which is made up of the statite, made up of the statite stone. Now, guys, statite stone is a soft stone. It is a soft stone. Right? Whereas, if you look at this particular statue, this is the statue which is made up of the jasper. Okay. A type of red sandstone. Okay. Red sandstone. Okay. So, here if we talk about the different materials being used to construct the different statues, what is the importance of that? This is the indication that in particular area, whichever material will be, that whichever material will be available, only that material will be used to construct the artifacts. For example, if suppose we have the, you know, we have the sandstone in India, we will construct the building from sandstone. If we have the soil in India, we will construct our building from the bricks. This is why, my dear, in the hilly areas, you see that 
the buildings are constructed in the villages by using the stones of the hills whereas in the plain areas like in uh, central and eastern up in the bihar region in the plain areas even during the earlier period the houses were constructed by the mud only the mud was used okay the mud was used to construct the house so anywhere the geography of that particular place defines the right basic material which is used for the construction of the artifacts construction of the buildings sculptures and so many things here also when we talk about the artifacts in harappan civilization we have three different types of the materials with the help of which the harappan artifacts were created for example the stone was used or the bronze was used or the terracotta was used in the stone artifacts we have the best example of the priest this priest figure is obtained from mohanjodaro okay obtained from mohanjodaro and in this particular uh, sculpture you can see that uh, draped in a shawl coming under the right arm and covering the left shoulder now guys this particular shawl about which we are talking here this shawl is having the special right the specific designs the specific designs now these are the basically trefoil designs trefoil means trefoil means what the three petal flowers three petal of flowers this is called as the trefoil design now in the upsc prelims examination you can expect this particular term okay trefoil just note this term okay note it down please if you are sitting with the notebook and paper and pen then note it down this trefoil trefoil is basically a triangular shape or oh, sorry a three petal three petal shape flower that is the trefoil okay now here you can also see that it appears to be it appears to be a woolen shawl <coughs> appears to be a woolen shawl you cannot see such patterns on the cotton because that will become itchy that will become itchy but in the woolen shawls such soft patterns can be easily created so probably probably the harappans were also aware of the handicraft techniques that is the you know that is the uh, you can say weaving of the cotton and woolen textiles that's very easily easily proved by this picture itself now when we talk about the second picture now guys in the second picture even you can see that this appears to be a mechanical arrangement because here the hands etc they were probably fitted they were probably fitted which means that there might be some grooves and uh, fits and this is why we can simply we can simply praise the skills the technical advancements that harappans might have achieved right everyone this also appears to be the picture of a monk or the picture of uh, you know somebody who might be an ascetic who might be an ascetic but since we don't have the head we don't have the head or we don't have the hands here so we cannot actually assume that exactly whose picture it would have been but when we talk about the picture of the priest the image of the priest right the image of the priest appears to wear a gold ornament as well and you can find that such type of ornament that is used in india even today as well even today we have the you know such ornaments you can also see the intricate pattern of the beard the intricate pattern of the beard that person has and comparatively a medium sized nose with the semi closed eyes semi closed eyes okay this semi closed eyes indicate what was he looking like a mongoloid no he was or he probably he probably was in the state of meditation state of meditation right everyone because the other sculptures in harappan civilization they don't show such type of eyes so these eyes only indicate the state of meditation might be possible for this person now when we talk about the other features 
we can see very clearly that beard was not very long rather it was a short beard and ears resemble the double shells with a hole in the middle okay and hair was parted in the parted in the middle so they actually did the mid parting right they did the mid parting of the hair not the side parting so currently we are following the fashion of the side parting you can see here the hairs are parted in the side but this gentleman he had the hairs parted from here in in the mid of the mid of the head okay so that was probably that was probably his own fashion now armlet is worn on the right hand and holes around the neck suggest a necklace so probably the men also men also wore the jewelries you saw that uh, crown you saw that uh, armlet and even probably the necklace was also necklace was also there so men probably wore the jewelries as you know as uh, fascinatingly as the women now when we talk about the bronze casting so stone is i think clear to everybody stone statues now moving to the bronze statues dear students bronze statues in harappan civilization they were created they were constructed with the help of a technique a technique called as the sire purdue this is the name of the technique the technique of the bronze sculpture making okay bronze sculpture making now what was this technique actually in this technique also known as the lost wax technique they are used to be a mold what is a mold the mold was basically a hollow structure a hollow structure if, for example if you can see this picture right this is a hollow structure okay hollow structure in which the wax was poured what was poured the wax was poured molten wax okay this molten wax this used to take the shape all right take the shape now here when we have the molten wax right everyone actually see there are two different methods let me just uh, to, right, tell that both methods separately in one method which is used today which is used today we have this type of hard shell which is hollow from inside hollow from inside we pour the metals from here right molten metal from here and then the molten metal takes the shape of this solid object this is the one method which is used today right which is used today but in the ancient harappan period or even in the later upcoming periods like during the gupta age or during the mauryan period during the chola period we find the different type of sire purdue for example first of all what will they do first of all they will be they will be having the wax prototype okay wax prototype then they will be putting the right putting the mud around right mud or sand mud or sand mold around this wax okay around this wax model all right everyone so suppose this is the wax model then i am just taking a soil and putting all the no, soil on all the side of this after some time the soil will be dried and then when i will heat the soil this this wax will melt and come out of the small hole from that same hole i will put the molten metal inside and the molten metal now molten metal will be you know solidifying after some period and then it will be having the same shape as the shape of the wax was there but now we cannot heat it to melt the metal again because that is not possible so we will break the mold from outside which is the soil made that will be breaking easily and we will get the pure metal in the form of particular you know particular product that we were trying to create this technology was used to construct the statues to sculpt the statues in the harappan period or even during the buddhist age or during the 
Mauryan, Guptas, Cholas, you know, during almost all the, all the phases of India's ancient and medieval history. So, this technology is very important. Even today, even today, in Chhattisgarh, in Chhattisgarh, we have the Dhokara art. We have the Dhokara, you know, Dhokara art, where the similar type of sculptures, similar type of sculptures, they are created, they are constructed with, you know, in the similar manner. They exactly look like the Harappan sculptures. Now, when we learned about this particular thing, we find the best example of that. We find the best example of that. You know, they were basically the Harappan, right? The Harappan dancing girl. Okay, dancing girl. But don't misunderstand. This is the bronze. Okay, this is the bronze statue. Remember that. These are the terracotta statues. These are the terracotta statues. Okay. We will talk about that later. So, when we talk about the bronze casting, apart from the dancing girl, we can also see that among the animal figures as well, certain animal figures were also made using the bronze. For example, there is a very famous bronze bull that we have found from Mohanjadaro. Similarly, the bronze casting was popular because, because all the major centers of the Harpan civilization, they used to have the bronze artifacts. In fact, in the prelims question as well, prelims question as well, they can give this type of a statement where they can confuse the candidate that uh, in Harappan civilization, the bronze artifacts were, uh, you know, they, they were manufactured only at Mohanjadaro. Or they might say in the statement that the dancing girl of Mohanjadaro is the only example of the bronze artifact in the Harappan civilization. Both the statements will be wrong. Because apart from the bronze buffalo, we also have the examples of the copper dog and the bird of the Lothal and the bronze figure of the bull from Kalibanga from Kalibanga. So, we have several examples. Please remember these things or if you do not want to remember, do not want to note down, then stay till the end because in the end of the session, I will be sharing my telegram channels link where I keep uploading the content of this particular class. All right, everyone. So, I hope that you got the clear idea that where were these type of artifacts located. Then metal casting appears to be the continuous tradition because even after the end of, after the decline of the Harappan period, we also get several evidences of the metal casting even during the Chalcolithic period or during the, during the contemporary periods of, uh, you know, after the end of the stone age or metal age, right. So, that started since the Harappan civilization continued to the Chalcolithic period and developed during the Iron Age, during the Iron Age. That is very important point to remember. Examples we can give that, for example, the Harappan and the Chalcolithic sites like uh, Daimabad in Maharashtra, it has the excellent examples of the metal cast sculptures like, so we can actually say that Daimabad is also famous for the metal sculptures. And by the way, Tell me in the comment box that why is Daimabad famous? Why is Daimabad famous? Which is the reason for the famous of, you know, fame of Daimabad? Now, we will be talking about the next material from which the Harappans used to construct their sculptures. We have studied about stones. We have studied about the metals. Now, we are going to study about the terracotta. Look at these two pictures. These two pictures indicate the images of uh, mother goddess, images of the mother goddess. You can see that uh, the mother goddess is wearing a lots and lots of the ornaments, lots and lots of the ornaments. She is uh, having uh, an hourglass, hourglass structure of the body, hourglass structure basically 
when you have this type of structure with the shoulder okay then waist and the hips this is called as the hourglass structure and she is actually wearing the huge you know huge necklaces which are hanging till the right on which are hanging up to the belly button up to the belly button now when we talk about the proportion between right proportion of the body and the head proportion of the body and the head that appears to be very very much weird because the body is quite elongated whereas the head that appears to be shortened right and why is this so it is because the technique which was used let me take you uh, tell you the technique which was used here that was called as right, called as the pinching technique the pinching technique okay what is the pinching technique everyone the pinching method when we call about when we call this method as the pinching method or the you know simply the pinch method which means that you are using you are using the thumb and the you know index finger to pinch to pinch and with this pinching you are giving the shapes like that the nose the lips or even the head is also pinched even today if we have this uh, you know uh, soft soils you know when we have the wax you know the play wax that we uh, basically uh, children use for you know playing and making toys etc so that is also that is also the similar type of substance where we have the soft wax to you know make certain type of uh, uh, statues or certain type of the artifacts etc for the purpose of you know children here also you can see that these type of uh, pieces of soil they were simply pressed right? they were simply pressed so terracotta that was a very very important uh, you can say right very very important uh, element to harappans for constructing their for constructing their artifacts here compared to the stone and bronze statue the terracotta representations of the human form are crude in the harappan valley crude means what crude means less refined less sophisticated less beautiful in the appearance and it is absolutely clear from the picture absolutely clear from the picture if you compare the slender body of this statue the hands of this particular statue the body face and the body dimension you can realize that comparatively these sculptures they are quite uh, no unfinished they are quite not so well proportioned okay everyone remember that so they are more realistic in gujarat side and kalibangan so the most important among them they include the mother goddess but apart from the mother goddess let me tell you some of the figurines consisting of the you know males some consisting of the males who are bearded males coiled hair and rigidly upright postures such type of figures are also obtained however the most important subject the most important uh, you know subject for the makers of terracotta figurines that is the images of the terracotta images of the animals right everyone so the terracotta animals have been found in the larger number in fact some of them appear that they might be the toys manufactured for the children and their and their needs in fact if you see the repetition of the figures exactly in the same position would suggest that he was a dt okay everyone so how do we exactly know that some of the figures we are calling that they were toys some of the figures we are calling that they were the dt's they were worshiped it is because when we see the repetition of the images for example whenever we will make the uh, statue of lord ganesha during ganesh chaturthi every year we usually make the statue in the similar type of appearance 
However, nowadays in the name of experimentation, we are using the different types of representations of Lord Ganesh. But usually we have the similar aspect of the face. We don't change the aspect of the face, isn't it? He has that uh, snout, you know, he has that trunk that is there. So this is why the scientists, particularly the archaeologists, they have concluded that the repetition means that the particular figure might be the figure of a deity. However, if we talk about terracotta, how many of you can exactly tell, exactly tell that this was a bull? This was a bull or a small birdie, a small, you know, bull, right, bird plus bull combination that appears having the wheel. So it is nothing but, nothing but a toy. Because here, you cannot identify exactly which type of animal is that. You can simply identify that this is some animal or some sculpture with the possibility of, with the possibility of moving wheels around it. Similarly, you can see the different sculptures showing the replica, showing the replica of the mother goddess. Okay, replica of the mother goddess. So here you can see appearance, the similar type of head, here also, here also, here also, but they are not wearing any jewelries. They are not wearing any jewelries. So that means what? That jewelries were probably belonging to the mother goddess in a very, you know, in a very high status statue. For example, when you go to the rich temple, bigger temples, you find that the deity the statue of the deity in that particular temple is highly ornamented. But we, when we go to the normal temples, we simply see a you know, statue kept in the temple. People are worshipping that. That is all. That is all. So here also, the archaeologists conclude that the mother goddess statue obtained from Mohanjodaro, etc. That might be more important as compared to the hundreds of the statues of similar types obtained from various places. Okay. Now, when we talk about the another major aspect, so we understood about the Harappan sculptures. Now, let us talk about the Harappan seals. Because the seals are the identity of Harappan civilization. In fact, what was a seal in Harappa? The seal was like a, a square shaped plaque. Remember, Sometimes you have this statement in the examination, in the question paper, they will say that only square shape. No, that is wrong. Right, a square plaque usually, right, usually square, but otherwise also we had the cylindrical, rectangular, okay, rectangular, etc. So usually 2 by 2 square inches, usually made from the soft river stone called as the statite. River stone called as the statite. And guys, this right, this particular seal, it also had the pictographic script that was, that is still not deciphered. What is the nature of that pictographic script? Let me tell you. When I am talking about the pictographic script, the meaning of pictographic script is what? Just have a look on this particular picture. This picture has got so many symbols. Can you see this symbol? Everyone, have a look on this. Okay, have a look on this. This is the exact symbol, exact symbol, which is made here. Now, I hope you can read this. I hope you can read this, isn't it? But similarly, you can see the symbols here as well. The symbol, okay, symbol here. Then this symbol. What is the meaning? Nobody knows. Because nobody is able to read that symbol. No? Nobody is able to understand. Nobody is able to decipher the meaning of that. But if you simply go by the variety of the Harappan seals, you can simply be amazed and 
some of the seals are very simple where where the bull is depicted this bull is called as the zebu called as the zebu all right everyone just a second <coughs> this is name as zebu and if you look at the horn this is very huge horn if you look at the you know the neck coat or the neck fur coat this is absolutely huge neck coat this is called as the unicorn okay unicorn here in unicorn you can see the single long curved curved horn okay and a tail like a bull see those people who think that unicorn is a real animal they should pay attention to the similarity in the back area in the back area right of the bull and the unicorn of the bull and the unicorn it appears almost similar almost similar even the pattern of the feet is also very same the pattern of the feet is also very same okay so overall the unicorn appears to be unicorn appears to be a combination of the different animals in the representation here half of the one half of the body the back half of the body that is exactly similar to the bull even the pattern of tail you can see the pattern of tail you can see here right exactly the same pattern of the tail however when we talk about the similarity of the you know, neck region and the horn etc then you can see the horn of the rhinoceros is comparatively straight but the horn of the unicorn is highly figurative highly curved isn't it so this indicates some type of uh, imaginary animal which was uh, represented on the harappan seals this is why it is not considered to be a act to be an actual animal and when we consider some imaginary figure but we have the repetition of that figure that indicates that you know it indicates that rhino that particular unicorn was a very very sacred type of animal it was highly revered probably worshipped type of animal isn't it like we do not have the normal human beings having the head having a trunk but when we have the repeated right repeated human images where the hands are hands are like human beings where the legs are like human beings the sitting posture is like human beings but the head is the head is like an elef elephant then we should understand that this person or this image must be the image of a god right so you can compare this type of analogy this type of understanding to understand that why was unicorn regarded as a uh, dt or you know the animal which was worshipped probably which was worshipped probably okay but if you look at the variety of the images you can see here probably there is a there is a ascetic who is uh, sitting and wearing the crown of the horns and holding a snake like a uh, no, snake like a serpent here into his hands here you can see the deer is right the deer like animal is sitting or the camel like animal is sitting but some no some child is sitting on the top of the animal on the reverse side the lion like animal is represented here lion like animal is represented here okay then we have the tiger we have the tiger like animal with a story representation where a tree is there and probably the lady the lady is sitting on the branch of a tree and uh, might be doing the hunting of the tiger or might be getting afraid of the tiger that is not very clear from this picture but this is the image which is quite fascinating here probably a man or a lady not very sure about the gender but it appears to be fighting against the two tigers in a standing position okay so these are the different in fact very diverse type of the seals very diverse types of the seals represented in the harappan culture 
Harappan culture also represents the elephant, also represents the rhino and again a strange type of animal, a strange type of animal where the tail is uh, similar to the tiger, the tail is similar to the tiger but having the horns like a bull, horns like a bull, so bull plus tiger, bull plus tiger, isn't it? You can understand it very well that Harappans, now UPSC can ask a question that Harappans used to portray the combined figures of two or more animals, absolutely correct statement, absolutely correct statement. So, we can say that, we can say that the fusion, the fusion of the animal representations that was a very common feature in Harappan civilization, yes, that was a common feature. Then, my dear, look at this picture. This is the uh, no, leeward side, the wrong side. This is the right side because it is, it is protruding outward. What is that? What is that? That is a swastik. That is a swastik, okay? This is a swastik enclosed in, enclosed in a box, okay? Here, what is that? This is the yogic posture right the person sitting in a yogic posture and having the bangles you know full of uh, bangles in one arm and in other arm the bangles are only three then the gear the head gear or the crown that is made up of the buffalo horns and then we have the certain images on the top of the right on the top of this uh, image certain symbols then we have the rhinoceros, okay, we have buffalo, we have a elephant and we have a tiger. So, these are the sculptures, right, these are the sculptures which indicate the variety of the seals and what is that? What is that? Guys, it indicates that seals were also having, the seals were also having the geometrical shape designs. Okay, everyone, so this is another Example of the unicorn seal. This is the detailing about the Pashupati seal, right? Pashupati seal. This is the bull. The bull made up of bronze. The bull made up of bronze. About which we were discussing in the beginning of the session. Look at the proportion of this sculpture. This is absolutely beautiful. Probably more proportionate and more balanced design as compared to the Harappan, sorry, as compared to the other bronze images of the Harappan civilization. Okay, everyone. And what is this? Anybody try to tell what is that? What is this exactly? What is this exactly? I think there will be no doubt at all when you see such type of images. It is the absolutely similar type of a sculpture which we call and worship today as uh, the shivling. And from where has this been obtained? This has been obtained, right? This type of sculpture has been obtained from, uh, from Harappa. Okay, from Harappa. And this type of sculpture has been obtained from Kalibangan. So, this is from Harappa. All right, everyone. And this is from Kalibangan. This is from Kalibangan. Okay. So, that is a, a very, very important aspect that one must keep in the mind. One must keep in the mind. This is not a seal. This is not a seal, let me tell you. This is simply a sculpture. A statue that's all okay this is not a seal so guys I hope that this is a absolutely a good learning experience for everyone you must have got a lot of things to learn in the tomorrow's lecture we will be talking about uh, the potteries of Harappa we will be talking about uh, the architecture of Harappa so till then make it sure that you do not forget to share this class with your friends as well and in case if you are uh, preparing for civil services examination, then do not miss the 
new batch which is going to close the admissions on the 31st of August and if you want the best fees if you want the best preparation guidance then you can check these batches which are going to start from right, 31st so thank you so much for watching it guys take care and uh, make it sure that if you want the content of this particular class or any of my classes you can join this channel this is comparatively a new channel so here i will be available quite easily to connect with everyone whosoever wants the guidance or anything you can also scan this qr code or you can simply uh, you can say no, just join this link right in case if you want to connect me or mail you can uh, mail your queries or your problems on this particular writing thank you so much take care bye bye and have a great day ahead jai hind